In this video, I am going to explain in very simple words what are the semantic functions in semantic kernel and how do you create them. Before I show you the code as how you create those functions, let's see some of the conceptual concepts. First thing you need to know is that semantic kernel by Microsoft is a software development kit to build applications which can talk to LLMs or large language models. These applications are called as plugins. These plugins can be built in Python, Java, or C Sharp. So the way it works is like this. A user asks the semantic kernel a natural language question, like in English or in any other language, and then semantic kernel goes and talks to LLM and in the natural language, of course, and then gives the output back to the user in the natural language. A plugin is the core building block of the semantic kernel. A plugin can have one or more functions because plugin is a group of functions. Every function performs a task. You can run these functions either manually or automatically with a planner. Planner is another component of semantic kernel, which I'll discuss shortly. There are two types of functions in semantic kernel. One is called as semantic function and the other one is called as native function. Semantic function interact with large language models. Semantic function take user input in natural language, give that to LLM and then provide the output from LLM back to user in natural language. Whereas native functions do any other tasks which are not suited for LLMs like saving information, looking up things, calculating numbers, etc. Okay, now let me show you an example which will elaborate these concepts in more simple way. Let's suppose we have a semantic kernel which in return has a plugin called as translator plugin. There are three semantic functions defined in this translator plugin. One is Identify language, a function which identifies the language of a text. Then we have a semantic function English to German, which goes and talks to LLM and converts an English sentence into German. And then we have a third function, which is Italian to Urdu, which translates any Italian text into Urdu language. So the way the semantic kernel in this diagram works is that it is composed of a plugin. And as we know, plugin is a grouping of functions. And we have functions for different tasks. So whenever a user comes in, ask anything, semantic kernel would pick up that task and would go talk to LLM and would re return the result. Now, whenever a user asks a question, this planner component of semantic kernel, it takes the user input as a natural language and then give it to the semantic kernel and picks up the relevant task from semantic kernel and then go semantic kernel talk to LLM which returns the result to planner and planner gives it back to the user. For example, in this case, the question asked from the planner is, can you identify which language this sentence is? And then in the code, hello there, and then translate it into German language. Now, if you see, this prompt is asking two questions or two tasks. So planner would go into its plugin and see which functions are relevant to this question. In our case, identify language and English to German are the tasks, or oh, sorry, um, English to German are the tasks which are most relevant. So it will convert it. It will pick up those, t those two tasks and then will give it to LLM LLM will execute them as per this text and then it will give the result back. So this is how semantic kernel, its plugin, its function and planner works. Now let me show you a code example. For this demo, I'm going to use Google Colab. And in this Colab, I will be running some commands to create a semantic function. So let's get right into it. The first thing we need to do is to install some of the modules necessary for semantic kernel, which includes, of course, sem pip install semantic kernel, torch library, transformers, sentence transformers, and 
Hugging Face because I'll be using a free model from Hugging Face for this demo. So let's wait for these to finish. Once this finishes, next step we need to do is to log into the Hugging Face. For that, you would need a token. So go to huggingface.co website, log in with your free email, and then on the left hand side, click on access token and grab the token from here. Let me check if it has finished installing the libraries. It is still running, so let's wait for it to finish. Libraries are installed, so let's now log into Hugging Face by these two commands. And it is going to ask you the token here. Go back to Hugging Face, grab this token, come back, paste it here, and click on Login. And that should log you in. Cool. Now, in the next step, I am going to import these libraries and then I'm going to download the model and the model for this demo. I'm going to use GP2 and the task will be text generation. So let's wait for it to finish. It has given me an error quickly. Let's check what exactly is saying. Okay. Uh, after this step, we need it to restart the runtime. So let me restart the runtime. Click on yes. We just need to log in. Here again, I'm grabbing the token and then click paste your token here. Login successful. Now run it again. This time it should start downloading the model. There you go. So let's wait for it to download. Takes around one minute or so, even less. That's done. And if you look at this code, all we are doing is we are importing these libraries, then we are initializing the semantic kernel, and then we are calling this at text completion service with our GP2 model. Okay, now in this step, we are going to create the semantic function, and it's very simple. All you need to do is to define your prompt, and this is the prompt I have defined with three code, double quotes and then input variable here and then just a simple prompt that whatever text we are going to give to this function, it should summarize that in less than 100 words. And then we are calling the create semantic function function from the semantic kernel, which is a built in semantic function. And then we are passing it our prompt, which is this, then a description and then some of the max tokens for the model temperature, which determines randomness and the drop probability. Uh, and you can adjust it accordingly, but defaults are fine in most of the cases. So let's run it and it should create your function. So as you can see, semantic function created. Now let's test it out. I'm going to grab a text from uh, Oracle's documentation and some of my own sentences. And then I'm going to call this semantic function to summarize the text which I'm going to paste. So this is the text I'm going to use. So this is just, um, I grabbed it publicly and then I am passing this text to this summary function, which is a semantic function defined above and then I'm printing the summary. So let's click on play. It could take a minute to complete and then it should result us, uh, should return us the res uh, summary. As a result, you can ignore these warnings. Let's wait for it to finish. So there you go. So as you can see, it has provided us the summary of this text here. So till here, the text goes on. Okay, so this is how you create the um, semantic functions. I hope that you enjoyed it. In the next video, I'm going to create a native function and end-to-end -end plugin for you. If you have any questions or queries, please put them in the comments. And if you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And I will be posting all the commands I use in my blog. And then I will drop the link in video description along with the GitHub repo of semantic uh, plugin here. Thank you very much.